Good afternoon, welcome to E-Tuesday. Um, let's see who's here today. Today I am speaking to you about speaking to your new season. I think that's what I'll call it. We'll see where it goes. Um, I'm going to be, um, I posted a thing up saying you can't defeat or overcome giants in a new season using or an old season's weapons or yesterday's weapons. So I'm focusing on that and we will see where it goes today. But thank you so much for joining me. Say hi in the comments. I'm going to get straight into it. Um, and whoever joins in, I know I am a little bit early. Janine von Skarkvig, welcome to you. Good to see your name pop in. I am a little bit early. I was so eager to get going. Um, I saw Janine was there. Um, and no one else is saying hello to me, but you are there. I can see you are there. So I'm going to get straight into it. And as people come in, they can just come in and catch up and and um, pick up where we are and then go back. Georgie Peters, thank you for saying hi and thank you for joining. Some people are scared to say hi in the comments. I don't know why. Um, yeah. So, okay, let's get going. You cannot, what did I say? You can't overcome giants in a new season with old season weapons. That's what we're looking at today and I've called it speaking to your new season. You know, you and I as believers, if my notes would open, there we go, you and I as believers have so much authority that I don't think we've even tapped into the, the authority that we have in, in what we say. So, um, Come on, my notes open in Jesus' name. Okay, they've opened. So today, let's have a look. If you, um, I think it was last week or maybe the week before, uh, probably last week, I spoke about Joshua, how God said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Arise now and cross over. And he said, you can be strong and courageous. I will, because I'm with you. Now, in the Old Testament, when God promised something or he revealed something to them, they had to respond and they had to arise and they had to walk in it. Um, Nicola Maxwell, welcome to you. Lisa Spaniolo, I'm glad you found me. Renee Eber is watching. And Jeannie King from Natal, nice to see you all popping in here. I've just started. So... Um, Whenever God spoke to people in the New Test in the Old Testament, that it required a response. God said to Abraham, Here, this is all the land that I'm giving to you and your descendants. Arise now and walk in it. He said, Look to the north, the west, the east, northwest, east, and south. <laughs> I did that back to front. Um, look at it, this is all yours. But he had to arise and walk in it. Now, there's a difference in the New Testament to the Old Testament because in the Old Testament, these were physical places. So when we read, God said to Abraham, this is the land I'm giving to you. When he said to Joshua, cross over and go and possess this land. It was a physical land. Now, in the New Testament, unless God has promised you some physical property, in the New Testament, the scriptures that we read are our promised land. They are the promises that we are to possess. So in the Old Testament, what they did was, uh, most of them, where God, I think almost all of them, where God revealed himself to someone in the Old Testament, they built an altar there, and they named that place um, a place of worship to God, it was dedicated to God, it was set up as a memorial. That this is the place where God revealed himself as the God of peace to, to Gideon. This is the, the place where God... Nicola Maxwell from Dubai, welcome to you. I just say the word Dubai and my heart just, I want to go there. So, um, so something, there was a memorial set up. There was a place of worship. Now in the, in the New Testament, when God gives us a promise, he's not, he doesn't expect us to go out into our garden, find all the stones and set up an altar of worship. But what he does require of us in the New Testament, when he promises us something or he reveals himself to us, 
in some way as a in a breakthrough in a deliverance in a promotion in provision whatever healing he's revealing his character to us and what he, he requires of us is worship yes but also agreement when god gives us a promise what he requires of us is a supernatural response which is agreement your natural mind doesn't believe it you, you hear this promise of healing provision ministry whatever it might be you hear this promise and your mind can't agree with it because your mind sees the natural but god requires a supernatural response from us which is agreement so today i believe we have an anointing that is i call it a double portion anointing to overcome the opposition that is against you as a believer or against the church to step into the new season and possess the promises that we see in the bible there's been you know for decades there has been an assignment um, or opposition against healing today does god heal today you can think of some other things um, that god has promised the church over centuries um, and there's still controversy within the church about does god do this today does god heal heal today and there was a bigger big um still today people some people are anti the prosperity message um, i don't call it the prosperity gospel because the gospel is about prosperity and if you understand prosperity and not what you hear other people say about prosperity or you put the tv on and you think you know what prosperity is Prosperity is our inheritance. I'm not talking about this today. I don't know why I'm bringing this in. Prosperity is our inheritance, and it means to, to prosper, to succeed, to have success in whatever you do with God and for God. And so some people, and I believe God wants to bless us materially as well and financially. And so a lot of people hear um, people speaking about prosperity, and, and they get the hair on their arm stands up and on the back of their neck because they think, it's materialism. No, it's not materialism. It's prospering in what God has called you to do. And he's given us an anointing as believers to prosper. To You know, when he said to Joshua, so you shall, uh, I don't want to go to Joshua now, but he said, meditate on these words night and day. I think I've got the right scripture. Joshua 1. He says, so you shall prosper. And that means you're going to have success. You're going to move ahead you're going to um, overcome the, the opposition if you meditate on what i promised you so it's the same today meditating on what god said seeing the scriptures in the word is our promised land that we are called to prosper so let's have a look at zechariah chapter 9 i'm going to give you a few scriptures first just to set lay a bit of a foundation zechariah chapter 9 from verse 9 onwards and let me get into this first before I before I read these scriptures. Uh, maybe you saw my post, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, about the Bogan Villa against the wall in my garden that is blooming all over the place. It's so heavy today that it is hanging. Now, we've been living in this house for, remember I'm speaking to you about you can't fight, fight giants in the new season with the old season weapons. Also, I want to speak to you about speaking to your new season and a double portion anointing. So it's got a threefold message that I want to encourage you with today. Now, this Bogan Villa has been here. We, we moved in here in 2001. So 22 years we've been here. Over a certain time of the year, for a few years, it has brought forth some pretty looking flowers, but not... The way it is this year and there's sort of there are two stems against the wall and the one is the one side is the one that brings all the blooms out the blossoms whatever you want to call them the flowers and the other one i haven't had the heart to chop it out it just looked dead for 21 years it looked like a, a dead piece of wood and but it grew right next to the other one and it was leaning into the other one so it all became entwined 
And sometimes I would go out there with choppers and I would chop the dead bits out. And they were so dead that I would take, pick them off and they'd just be dry with nothing on the inside. So I thought this thing must be dead. Now, towards the end of last year, I went out there and I looked at this thing and I thought, I'm sure this is the year to chop it out so that the one that brings forth the blossoms can spread and grow. Anyway, I never got round to it, thankfully. And then one day, I looked out the window. You know, it happens suddenly. Actually, it's been happening all the time. I just never noticed it. I looked out the window, and I noticed some green in what I thought was the dead stem. There were these green leaves and little pink flowers coming out right at the bottom. And so I watched it over time, and this thing that I thought had been dead for 20 years suddenly began to blossom. And I... I noticed now, over the past month or so, even the color from the from the bottom of the stems, you know, it's like a, the bark of a tree, if you know what a bougainvillea is. I'm not talking about a little, a little stem. It's no longer gray and dead. There's color coming up from the roots into this thing. To me, it's a, it's a miracle. I don't know anything about plants, flowers. I don't have the gift. If people give me plants, I just pray that they will survive. Um, and so I can grow lavender because it just grows anywhere. And a cactus you can give me, that survives. Um, and so this thing, so every time I look out the window, I just see the color getting darker and it's spreading from the roots up. And this thing is a miracle in my garden. And so when I look at it, I think about our lives as believers. That many times we think there's nothing going on. I can't see any fruit in my life. And you know this message. I can't see any fruit in my life. I'm stuck in this old season. I, um, I don't know what to do anymore. Maybe I should just be chopped out and put on the rubbish heap. Huh. I, none of you think this, but the people who aren't listening to me think this about themselves. But now listen to this scripture that I found. It's in Job chapter 14. Now, I avoid the book of Job, apart from the very last bit where it says God restored everything to him. I don't preach out of the book of Job. But this, you've got to hear this. Job chapter 14, verse 7 to 9. Even at the smell of water, there is new life. For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that if it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease, though its roots may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. At the smell of water, a, plant, a tree is going to smell that water, make its way to the source so that it can bud and bring forth branches like a plant. That's what's happened to my bougainvillea in the garden. What I realized is, if there's life above the ground, there must be water feeding that plant. In your life, if there's life, if there's, and I'm not saying everything is perfect, you could still be waiting, but if there's life, there's water. There's a source that is good. If everything you do is just struggle, 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 something is wrong at the source. And so you know what we do with when we look at a new season and we try to use the what we did in the season before to get things to be fruitful, to get things to happen, we try and do it the way we did before. And it's simple. In the new season, what we need to do is make sure the source of what we're doing. And I'm not talking about your tomato sauce or your, you know, the gravy you put on your chicken pie. I'm talking about the source, S-O-U-R-C-E, that the source has to be life. In other words, is the promise that God gave you grounded in the Word of God? You water that tree with your words. Um, you water, you speak to your new season with your words. And you know, you can speak to your new season and speak a whole lot of rubbish over your own life with your words. 
You speak to your new season with the word of God, the promises of God. And it's time that you and I got some good word in our mouths. I had this thought this morning. I'm really, um, um, my message, I said I was going to read you scriptures. I'll get to it now. A new season that you're looking at now is always defined by a fresh word that God has given you. A word from the scriptures. A word that he's personally spoken to you about. You have to have that as the framework for this new season you're looking at. Because the devil's going to come and try and tell you, you're just like that dead tree in the garden and nothing is going to come of your life. You know what, what I had this thought this morning. Do you remember, maybe you remember the advert for the flake chocolate. Not the dipped one. I'm a bit disappointed in flake at the moment. Cadbury's flake. The one that really flaked. You know, you had to uh, unwrap the top and take a bite. And then when you got to the end of the chocolate, you, you held it up and it all fell out because it had all flaked inside the chocolate. Do you know what I mean? Now, don't rush out and buy a flake now. First, listen to me and then you can go and buy chocolate. But... This morning I thought about this advert for some reason and I remember the words in the advert. It was, one bite and all resistance crumbles. Remember that advert? If you know that advert, give me some thumbs up. You know what happens in our lives if we're stuck in an old season and we're looking at the opposition and we forget that in, an, in a previous season, we I'll, I'll use this term, we get set in our ways. We know how to operate, we know how to pray, we know what God has said, and we're in this flake packaging. But we stay there, and then God says, there's something better, there's something new, there's, there's um, you know, I want to do something greater, I want to give you favor, I want to send you somewhere else, I want to open doors, I want to do this. And then we're stuck in our ways, in, in the season we've been in, and we can't see anything more than where we are now. And so the scripture in Psalm 34 that says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, that deals with any resistance we have when we look at the new season. It deals because, you know, we can have resistance in our lives towards the new thing God has said. Because we say, but the, what I'm doing now is so, I like what I'm doing now. I don't want to change it. I don't want to go somewhere else or try something new. Uh, this seems to be working now. And so there's a resistance. We, we become set in our ways. And you know what happens when you, this, this is, I believe, is a big call for God's people in the season. It's intimacy with him. Because we can't go into a new season without that intimacy with him. But it says in Psalm 34, Oh, taste and see that God is good. It's like eating that flake and all resistance crumbles. When you taste that God is good, you can be a set in your ways. When you fall in love, think about the first time you fell in love with your husband or your boyfriend you've got now. Hopefully you still got the same person. So when you first fell in love, you had your life all mapped out before you. You were going to go and travel and or set up a career or do something. And then you met this person. You fell madly in love. Everything all your plans for your life just crumbled because all you wanted to do was be with this person. You would follow him or her to the end of the world just to be with this person. When you feel forgotten in the natural and then suddenly you've been seen, someone notices you, you get favor with someone, all resistance crumbles. When you gave up on your dreams and then God came and reminded you, it's like resistance to the new just crumbles. And this is where we are right now, that there are a lot of people who are looking with trepidation at the new season because they know there's opposition out there. So we have to start this journey in the new season with, I'm not going to be, in, um, what's the word, inflexible? That doesn't sound right. I'm going to be flexible. I'll say it that way. I'm going to go where God says go. I'm going to Resist the temptation to stay here where I am, where everything is familiar. I want to be where God is. So, let me go back to where I was. New season. Um, I said I'm going to read some scriptures. Okay, Zechariah 9, 
9 to 15, this is what it says. Let's get some word in here. Instead of talking about flake chocolates, because now I feel like one. I love to send Rory to buy me one, and he doesn't do that. Whenever I eat a chocolate, I always have to eat it somewhere where he isn't, because he gives me a look. You shouldn't be eating that. Okay, so, Zechariah 9. <laughs> Zechariah 9, from verse 9, I'll read you from verse 9 to verse 15. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a cold, a fall, the fall, a cult, the fall of a donkey. You know that's Jesus. Um, I'll cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Here we are again, a pit that has no water in it. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. If you need a promise of God restoring double to you, take that one. Zechariah 9, that was verse uh, 12. I said to verse 15, but I'm not going to read all the way through. Zechariah 9 verse 12 in the message says this. It sounds even better in the message version. This day, I'm declaring a double bonus, everything you lost twice over. Can you believe that for your life today? Because that's what God has for you. But now remember... We have the word in our mouth. We're either for him or against him by what we say. Romans 8. This is the authority we have. Romans 8, 16 to 19. I'll read the scriptures quickly so we can get into it. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Um. And it goes on, verse 19, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. We are joint heirs with Christ, which means we have an inheritance and we have authority because we are joined to him. Turn to John 16.33. John 16.33, and this is a good one, talking about looking at our new season and realizing that we've got something to do with it. To getting there. We have to cooperate with God. John 16, 33 says this. Um, These things I have spoken to you, this is Jesus speaking, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And you know what that word cheer means when he says be of good cheer? It means have courage or have comfort. So our courage and our comfort comes from the fact that Jesus already overcame the world. So any opposition that we are facing, we realize that opposition has already been dealt with. Our part is to be of good cheer, to have courage, to remember what we're saying, and to make sure that we are sticking to the source, the water source. Now, um, a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago, I shared this already, but I'll say it again. I'm talking about the source of water. Because if we want to overcome now, um, we need to be where God is. And in Ezekiel 47, there's the, story, there's the message of how Ezekiel is taken to the temple. And then he gets to this place where... He sees water coming from underneath the door of the temple, Ezekiel 47. And then he says, in verse 5, he said, you know, the water came to the ankle, then to the knees, and then came to his waist. And then in verse 5, it says, again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. I believe 
that if we want to overcome in these days, there's a response that's required of us as believers, and that is to be in the place that is too deep for you and I to do without God's help, without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's what this Ezekiel 47, it takes us, if you read the whole of Ezekiel 47, about the healing, the leaves on the tree, wherever the river goes, uh, things will live, there will be a multitude of fish, wherever the waters go, things will be healed, wherever the river goes. And so you and I on this journey into the promised land need to be in a place and it sounds easy to say this and it's easy to hear this, but when there's opposition out there, we forget that we need to be in the place where God is. And that is the supernatural place that we can't do in the natural, that we need His help. So when we look at a new season, one of the ways that we speak to our new season is guarding our mouths, be careful what comes out of your mouth, but also remember, I heard Rory this morning as I just walked past the door, he was talking about strongholds again, and I'm going to give you an, a different idea of a stronghold, and have you heard of the word flak, um, the military term flak, F-L-A-K, flak was, I'll read it to you, um, it was anti-aircraft fire that came from the ground but they would shoot up into the air and it would, re it would release shrapnel and dark little clouds but the, they would just shoot them up into the air and the allies flying through had to dodge the flak um, it was artillery designed to shoot upward at planes also Flak, explosive shells from an anti-aircraft weapon. Also, I'm looking at this now in my notes here. Flak also means a publicity agent or someone who promotes you. So, we use the term flak today. Oh, I'm coming under flak. In other words, I'm really being criticized for something I haven't done. People are saying things that are not true about me. I'm coming under flak. And it comes from that anti-aircraft uh, gun, weapon, whatever it's called, explosive shells being shot into the air. Now a lot of you, a lot of people, you and I, live in this atmosphere where there's always stuff being shot in the air around us. That's not the real threat. It's the shrapnel that gets sent into the air around the planes flying around. That's a real threat. But also, there's a whole lot of words and lies. Like the, the devil has his publicity agents out there very busy spreading all the stuff and the lies and the shrapnel and stuff, sending it our way so that we will get our eyes on the flak instead of being where God wants us to be. And the reason is, if we're so busy fighting through the flak, we get tired out. But if we stick with God, and we, we make sure we are where He is, that flat means nothing. Then we'll be able to look at it, and it's just a whole lot of dark cloud out there, like little puffs of cloud, with nothing that can really harm us when we stick close to God. We can choose to believe the lies, and live according to the lies, or we can choose to believe the promises of God. And that's where our, our secrets are. That's where the secret to our success is. So, a new season requires new revelation. Um, if you want to overcome the giants in the new land, if there were giants in the promised land, and God said to them, to the, to the people, his people who went in, go in, you're going to overcome them, you're going to eat them, you know, Caleb said we're going to eat them like bread, and, and God said, it's okay, I'm going to be with you. It's the same today in the New Testament, because we serve the same God, and the promises are all yes and amen. So when he says something to us, we believe that the opposition has already been dealt with. But what happens is, in a new season, when he's, God says to us, I'm going to take you somewhere, increase is coming, healing is coming, 
He gives us new revelation about this thing that we are moving towards because he knows that that new revelation is going to be our strength. So, the word in Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, speaks of warfare. Because one of the translations of that you prepare a table means set the battle in order. So God already sets the battle in order before us in the presence of our enemies. Everything is there. It means to arrange, to set or put or lay in order, um, to ordain, to furnish, to direct, to compare. And then it means set the battle in order. So as soon as God gives you a prophetic word about increase, about ministry, about a change of season, the table is set in order, the battle is set in order, and where do you think you, you fit in in that, that order of battle? You're on the winning side, because God's fighting the battle for us. But we have to remember, if we, every word, every, I'm trying to, a table of wars, the strategies of war, exactly that, Lisa, when God gives us a promise, that new word that's come, that revelation that's come, is to given to us so that we will speak to our new season. If you think of um, David running out onto the battlefield in front of Goliath, there was nobody else there. It was this little shepherd boy and this huge giant. And David began to speak to his future and to Goliath's future by what he said. Go read it in 1 Samuel 17. I'm not going to look at it now. He began to prophesy to the enemy what he was going to do with them. And by doing that, he was already agreeing with what had been set out on the table. The, the battle had been set in order by God. God had sent him there at that moment in time for a purpose that is bigger than we can even understand today and that I don't even think David understood when he stood in front of Goliath. So he began to prophesy to the enemy and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. But the reason he could do that was, he said, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. He brought God into the battle. So now here in you facing a new season, you see the giants, your biggest protection is to I'm coming in the name of the Lord. You come with a new word in your mouth so that you're speaking to the season even before you get there. So, example. Let's talk about uh, healing. Before you get healed, you're already calling yourself healed. You're calling those things that are not as though they were or are today. You're using the words of your mouth to create what God has said He's promised you already, and you're prophesying it into being before you get there. People are going to think you're crazy. You're going to think you're crazy yourself many times. But you, you speak to yourself as though, you know, there's some people, I've heard some people say you've got to dress for success. <laughs> when you're going for an interview, you get up in the morning, you put your best clothes on, you put your lipstick on. We used to know a friend who, um, she didn't go to work. She was a housewife, but she would get up every morning and she would make sure she put her makeup and her lipstick on because she was dressing for success. It's, it was just an act, an action that she had to do um, so that she knew she was ready for the day. So, I don't know. Sometimes we look at our future and we see what God has promised us and it all just seems so long to wait and so far away and we feel like that dead tree stuck in the ground. And... We need to be people who say, God, I believe what you said to me. I'm going to, there, there was a meme that went around a few years. I shared it a few times. Um, begin to live as though your prayers have already been answered. That's it. That explains it. If we want to walk into a new season, the response that's required of us is a supernatural response. And the only way we're going to have that supernatural response is if we hear the word that he's given us, and we allow that word to come out of our mouths to shape the vision into what God sees so that we can see it too. You know, our words create worlds. God spoke the world into existence. He wants us to use the words that he's given us to, to shape the vision for our lives that he already sees. 
So a new word that comes, fresh revelation. I said revelation is required for the new season. So a, a revelation that's given is a weapon for you to speak to your new season. But how do we get it? We are where God is. There's a need to be in the high places, out of reach of that flak. You know, the flak is up there in the sky. The enemy is shooting from the ground upwards to get those planes flying. But you need to be where God is, where his weapons are, where he is. And it's not even being above the flak. It's, it's his way of thinking. The enemy is already under our feet. So when we begin to think the way God thinks, and we begin to, I'm checking if our power is still on, we begin to think the way God thinks, because we, we say, we, you know, we've heard that call, come up here, be where I am, let him be your hiding place, and then we're hearing what he, what he is hearing, we're hearing what he's saying, because I don't think God even pays attention to what the enemy is saying. We do it too often. So we'll be out of the reach of all that flack, when we are in the high places with God. And the high places are the spiritual, the heavenly places. I spoke about this before. So remember that dream I told you about, about somebody who came into a meeting that Rory and I were doing, and Rory called him forward. He was dressed in casual clothes, but he had this Bible, his big, this big Bible with him. And Rory said, do you have anything to share? And I watched from the side, and this guy leaned against the wall, and he tried to start reading his Bible, but he couldn't. He just started to speak in tongues. And as he spoke in tongues, he started to cry, and he carried on. He didn't just say a few lines. He carried on as if he was reading his Bible, but it came out in tongues, and he was crying. And I looked at the people sitting in the, in the crowd, and they were crying as well. And so this guy, after a long time, this guy stopped speaking, reading his Bible in tongues, turned around and he handed me the microphone and all I did was got the microphone and I said uh, um, I said the Holy Spirit is coming upon you and people were just crying all over the place it was amazing one of those dreams I didn't want to wake up from and so I believe that God is making himself available the Holy Spirit is always available but in this season, when there's so many people saying, I know there's a new season, I know there's something happening, there is, um, there is a new thing happening, that we need the weapons to be in operation now, and the weapons are so simple but so powerful, that when we rely on the Holy Spirit, He's going to come upon us, and He's going to refresh us, that and take us to those places that are so deep that we can't cross over. No ankle, no knee, no waist height. It's going to be a river that can't be crossed unless we swim over it. And we need the help of God to get across. So if we want to see the double portion of anointing, you know, I know, um, I know I could have gone to Elisha and Elijah because Elisha said to Elijah, my request is that I have a double portion of the Spirit that is upon you. But you know that in 2 Kings chapter 2. Um, and I'm talking about God making himself available. Because if we want to see the double, we need to step into the supernatural. It's, it's a supernatural response. And being in a river that we cannot cross on our own means we are out of our depth. We are totally relying on God and every time we choose to do the opposite of what we think we should do because it worked in the previous season when we when we choose to do the opposite of what we think in the natural then we've stepped into the supernatural realm if we want to double we need to be in the supernatural realm and how do we get the supernatural realm be in the high places where God is so I had something else I wanted to give to you um, I'll read it to you. We water, you water that tree with your words. You water the new season with your words. Um, the word is always powerful. The, the word of God is always powerful. You can't find something and say, no, that doesn't work. That belongs to an old season. This word of God is eternal and powerful and alive. But it's the revelation that you get that applies to where you are now. 
in your mouth that's going to get you dealing with the opposition that's trying to stop you from getting there. There are a lot of people who are seeing this, this opposition and it's making them back off from the things that God is promising them. 1 John chapter 5. Let's have a look at this quickly and then I'm going to finish. Um, 1 John chapter 5 verses 4 and 5 says this. Are you all still there with me? You know, God has some great things promised. He has promised some great things to his church. There's some of you sitting with great promises over your life and in your life. Some of you are sitting with amazing dreams that you know God has planted as a seed in your heart. But the opposition has been so big that there's a tendency to think, Ugh, I may as well give up. I want to say to you, don't give up. Now's not the time to give up. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 says this, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. He, who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? It's our faith that has overcome the world. Our faith in God. Um, who's Delise Saunderson? You can speak about what you have or can have what you, or you can have what you speak about. Exactly. I really believe that. But are we willing to get our eyes off the flack, get our eyes off, our ears off the sound of what the enemy's saying? Or even, this is, this is a difficult one. Are we willing to forget about how we feel? <laughs> to say, God, I want to be where you are. I want to be in the higher places where you are. So that I can be saying what it is you want me to say. A lot of people try the saying what God says. Um, they say it and it just becomes like a habit. But when you truly taste and see that God is good. And words come out of your mouth. And you know, this is the life of God. I'm speaking life into a situation that seems to have been dead for 20 years. You know, I didn't have to go up and water that Bogan Villa every morning for it to start, to start growing again. I didn't have to do anything. But somehow, that Job scripture, at the scent of water, those roots began to find a source of water that has... I don't know how long it's been there. I don't know where the, water, the source of water is coming from. But there's something there that's causing that thing to grow. What is your source of strength in these days? And it's got to start with intimacy. Um, I want to encourage you today that... I want to encourage you today to never look at your life and say... I'm just forgotten. I'm just like this dead tree on the side of a wall and one day I'm going to be chopped out. There's a purpose that God has for you as a believer in the season. But there's a call to respond with a supernatural response. A lot of people say, I want to operate in the supernatural. I want to um, see the miracles and the signs and wonders. But you know, in order for a miracle to happen, you have to be in the deep end. Um, and that's where the supernatural comes into being. If we could just cross over, even walk across the river, the Jordan River, to our promised land and it's waist, you know, waist high, and we could get over there, then fine. But this one in Ezekiel 47 was a river that couldn't be crossed over, and this is where we are now. So if you are needing a supernatural breakthrough, a supernatural touch from God, um, a supernatural turnaround in a situation, you need supernatural doors to be opened that you can't open yourself. You need people to contact you that with favor towards you so you can fulfill your purpose. You need the hand of God. And how does that happen? Not just by, oh, I'm going to sit back and wait until it happens. We get involved with God and we step into the supernatural. We get out of the boat of familiarity where we can row down the river and we can sing, what's that song? 
row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Um, and we can do that, and we'll still go to heaven, but if we want to see the supernatural interventions of God, we've got to lay down those oars and step out in the supernatural where he is, in the heavenly places. I read you a scripture last week, I think it's 2 Peter something, um, no it's not, I think it's Ephesians, where we, yeah, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, it's Ephesians. And um, we already have access to all those things in the unseen realm. That's in the supernatural realm. We have been empowered with access to those things. So whatever it is you need from God today, say, God, I want to be where you are. I want to come up to where you are. There's, there's a call, come up higher. I want to get out of this down here thinking where I can, I can make my own way. I can maintain what I've got, and I want to get out of this. I want to be walking, living in, this, in the not weird, flaky, super spiritual, but where my faith is in God and what he said in his promises, that one day there will be a breakthrough. One day I'm going to see those things begin to bloom in my life. One day that promise that God gave you is going to come to pass. And we need to be saying, God, we're ready for those things. We want those things. So I'm going to, it is now quarter past two. Um, our power is still on, amazingly. Dorleen Valentine, nice to see you. Lisa Spagnolo, I'm glad you're encouraged. Megan Harvey, good to see you. And Denise Saunderson, that's a new name. I haven't seen your name before. Um, Mandy Diedrich, welcome to you. Um, Janine, always, Janine, fake it till you make it, exactly, fake it till you make it, um, <laughs> yeah, put your lipstick on and say, um, I'm ready for the day, Isel van den Berg, remember, um, if you were at the ladies weekend in January, I said there were two things that I've decided to do this year, and one of them was, every morning I get up and I say, thank you, Lord. Even if I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do today? I'm still, you know, not ready for the day. I say, thank you, Lord. And it just opens up the way. <laughs> the attitude of gratitude just opens up the doors. Why? So God can come in and speak. Because we create that gratitude, thanksgiving, creates that place for seeds to begin to grow. Um, yeah. I think a lot of you saw my post last night. I just want to share this before I leave you. I sat up late last night, and I was thinking about things in life, and, and I know a lot of you will be able to relate to this, and I'm, I'm going to pray for you about this now. The things in life that God tells us to do, and we do them, and there's no effort, there's no striving. You, um, It just works and people are excited and people get ministered to and you're doing your thing and there's just fruit everywhere all kinds of fruit and then there's there's some other times where God instructs you to do something and it's like this uphill battle and it's like am I doing the right thing and then I have to realize that God is still there with me in the thing just because not everyone's excited about it or people aren't um, you know, jumping on board and, and, you know, it seems to be a little more slower than, than other things. But my part is to be faithful to do what I know to do. And that is to study the Word, to spend time with God, to stay in the higher places with Him, to hear what He has to say, to make sure that I'm staying in the right place, doing the right thing. It's so like God is in the everyday things that we do. And sometimes we're so busy looking for the the fireworks and the pats on the back, that, that, that's what we, we strive to see. And, and our, our mission is to be with Him. And that is the place where everything flows from. That's where the favor comes. That's where you, you find your place. You find the anointing on your life to be with Him. And so I realize that in those mundane things, God is still there. God is in the process. As I'm waiting, as I'm like, the feet, I feel sometimes like that tree out there and I can't see any fruit and one day somebody's going to come and pluck me out by the roots. But God says, no ways. There's a seed of purpose there in that thing. 
There's a seed of purpose in your life. And God says, no ways is that going to be plucked out from you. I'm watching my word. I'm watching over my word in your life to perform it. Every word has the power. That are, Every promise has the power to be accomplished. But we need to stick close to him. So be encouraged with that today. I hope what I said to you makes sense. But every word that God speaks over our life comes with the purpose in it. It's a seed of filled with purpose. It's packed with power and purpose. And if we are people who are going to say, God, I want to be where you are. I want to speak to my new season. Um, that we begin to speak what God says. And then we see things begin to happen. It might be slow. But don't be deterred by the slowness of something. Because God's not into any hurry. <laughs> Even though I say acceleration is happening, I really believe that there's a a bride arising, a warrior bride that's arising in these days. And we're going to um, operate in a double portion of anointing. So when the opposition comes, remember, one bite and all resistance crumbles. One bite of the goodness of God. And you don't care what the enemy says to you because the goodness of God just outweighs the opposition that you, you're feeling right now. So when you are in the higher places with him, and all this flack is happening around you in the higher places with them. And you experience his goodness, his keeping power. That, to me, is the best. The keeping power of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious to you. You know, this is our inheritance. This word has been spoken over us. And it's a seed that's in every believer. The keeping power of God. So in these days... With the opposition that's out there, you've been kept by the hand of God. And so stick close to Him, be in the high places, forget about the flack, and just wait on Him. Be of good courage, wait on Him. So, I saw some more people joined in a little bit later, but you can go back to the beginning and you can catch up with what I said. So thank you so much for joining me today. Yep, our power is now off, but we've got one of those boxes that keep our internet going, so, um, yep, I'm still here, fortunately, I haven't just disappeared, so I'm going to pray for you, if that's okay, and then I'll let you go, Lord, I thank you for your love for your people, that you love us without measure, that you love us unconditionally, and you see the best in every single person, and Lord, I thank you that as we trust you, as we put our faith in you, as we say, God, we want to taste and see your goodness, that our lives will change. When we've been set in our ways and we can't see any further than now, we experience your goodness and a faith just begins to arise in our hearts and we get excited about the future again. And so, Lord, I pray for supernatural interventions for every person watching today. I pray for, um, as they look at the giants, that they'll begin to say what you say and it's always a positive word for their lives. And a word that deals with the opposition in Jesus' name. I thank you for healing today. I thank you for provision today. I thank you for direction today. I thank you for revelation today. And most of all, I thank you that your people will experience your love like never before in this season. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, thank you so much for joining me on this E-Tuesday. And you go and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon and evening. And Lisa in Canada, I'm not sure what time you, if it's, uh, if we are ahead of you, it's actually quite late there, or, yeah, anyway, have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you soon again, remember ladies, Prophetic Life Ministry Morning on the 6th of May at Connect Church in Bergfleet, please come and join, we're going to have a blast, a good blast. So I'll see you soon again. Lots of love. Bye. Thanks for joining today's session. I hope you were equipped, empowered, and encouraged today by what you heard. Remember, you can find all the live video sessions that you may have missed on this page, on the Facebook page, Kathy Mole Ministries, or on YouTube, Kathy Mole on YouTube. You can also find all the other resources on kathymole.com. Thank you.